The Whistler. That whistle is your signal, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the whistler's strange story, Last Curtain. The company's engagement at the Opera House in Los Angeles had two weeks to run. But Oriane Donati, whose beautiful voice was largely responsible for the success of the tour, had other things on her mind. Oriane was no longer thrilled by the curtain going up. She was not new to the music world. And moreover, when she allowed herself, she could feel the years inside. She didn't allow this often, of course. And certainly it was not being displayed at the moment. With Charles beside her, quietly reassuring, Oriane found it a simple matter to face the anger of the impresario, Giulio Cassini. Have you lost your mind, Oriane? You cannot just tear up a contract. I'm protected by the law. Law, law. There is only one law I recognize. I do as I please. And I will not desert my Charles. And why should you, my dear? Do marry Charles, but remain with us for the season at least. Please, Carmilla. It is impossible. Charles will not hear of it. We are both desperately in love. Am I right, my darling? Yes, you're quite right, Oriane. Oriane, please, reconsider. Sorry, Julio, my mind is quite made up. Come, Charles. Let's go someplace where we can be alone. By all means. <laughs> all right, play your games, but if you want my advice... You... It was rather unpleasant, dear. Yeah? Julio, <laughs> he only thinks of the money he will lose. Enough of him, though. Do you really love me? Don't you know? Yes, I suppose I do. <laughs> that was nice, darling. Now I must go to my dressing room. Can you amuse yourself for a little while? Yes, but do hurry back. <laughs> At this point in your career, in your life, the most important thing is Charles and your love for him. You're thinking about this, aren't you, as you sit down before the mirror in your dressing room? Mama. What? Mama. Oh, Felice. How often have I told you not to call me Mama? Oh, Mama. I, what I'm... am I going to do with you? Oh, tell me. How are you coming along with your voice? Very well. Professor Gresby is pleased with my progress. What are you up to now? I've just finished Faust. I'm to take up Martha next. Oh, Martha, lovely. You know, Mr. Cassini has a great hope for your future. Do you enjoy your work in the chorus, darling? Very much. But, Mama, how long must this pretense go on? Oh, now, Felice, my baby, it will be over sooner than you think. I... I am going to be married. Oh, married? Yes, Caramia, to a very fine, handsome, rich man. We shall all three of us be very happy. Oh, oh, Mama, when? Soon, Felice. Very soon. Now, child. Yes? A thousand pardons, my lady, but uh, if you have the time, I should like a word with you. I am very busy, Pippo. But, uh, well, young lady, you run along now. I hope the advice I have given you will help you to amount to something. Oh, it will, Madame Donati. And thank you. Well? What is it, Pepo? Please, Madonna. Is it true what they are all saying? That you are leaving us? Being married? Yes, it's true. Oh, no, my lady, no. You must remain. The opera needs you. The opera? <laughs> Go away, old man. Go to your world of props where you belong. You fatigue me. Oh, you grieve me, Madonna. True, I am without physical grace and beauty, but... Oh, please. In my heart. There is love. Love? 
Love indeed. Go away, buffo. Go down to your room where you belong and stay out of my life. Stay out of what does not concern you. Peppo doesn't really annoy you, does he, Orian? He only amuses you. But you're genuinely disturbed about your daughter, Felice. Because you haven't mentioned her to Charles, have you? Somehow the opportunity has never been right. But you know there'll be plenty of time for that after you're married. And his love for you will make him understand anything. The following morning, Julio sends for you. And he seems in a strangely happy mood when you enter his office. Uh, Orian, come in, come in. Where are the papers? Canceling my contract? On the desk, my dear. There's six copies. The sooner you sign them, the sooner you can start preparing for the great day. You do not want me to perform tomorrow night? Oh, not necessary at all, Carmi. Now, if you just sign the paper... Julio. Yes? Uh, tell me, how is it that this morning you seem so agreeable? Only yesterday you were tearing out your hair, shouting you were ruined. I have had a change of heart. I know about love. I know it cannot wait. I thought it over. After all, who am I to oppose Cupid? Huh? Julio, you are lying. What has happened? All right, you ask. This morning, Madame Brock signed with us. Kitty Brock? You sign her before you cancel my contract? Uh, yes, now I hear the paper, six copies signed at the bottom. I Every... sign nothing. Good day, Julio. Wait, Orion, we must discuss this, please. There is nothing to discuss. The thought that Julio has taken you at your word about leaving the company infuriates you, doesn't it, Orian? That he would sign someone else before you've even given the final release on your contract. And of all people for him to choose, Kitty Brock, a woman you've never liked. Since you refuse to cancel your contract, you continue to sing your roles. Then a few days later, you learn even more about Kitty. It's during a lull in the rehearsal while you're standing in the wings that Peppo, the property man of the company, whispers the unpleasant news in your ear. My lady. Huh? You? What are you doing sneaking about? I would like to tell you how pleased I am that you remain with the opera after all. Oh, go away, Peppo. No, it is a wise decision you make, Madonna. Uh, that porco is not worthy of you. Porco? How dare you speak of my beloved in that manner? Go about your business, wretch. I must sing in a moment. Yes, my lady, sing. Give your love to music. Do not waste it on him who deceives. Deceives? I speak the truth, my lady. It is him whom you would call husband that deceives you. He has been seeing her these past weeks. I know I followed them. Her? Who? Speak up. It is the other. The one with the voice of a god. Kitty? Oh, no. Peppo... If you speak falsely, I kill you. No, 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 no. I speak the truth. Please, please. Even now, this very moment. Look. The third box to the left. Eh? They're together. Oh. Do, do you see, Madonna? They are not looking down at the opera. <sighs> no, indeed. They look into each other's eyes. No. They are in love. Oh, is it her design to make me out a fool? To take all that is mine? No. Oh, no, I shall not let her do that. The worst has happened, hasn't it, Orianne? Charles and Kitty. The shock of it keeps you confined to your hotel rooms all the next day. And the evening's performance goes badly. And the day after that brings angry words between you and Julio. When he tells you that Kitty Brock is going to sing your role tonight, regardless of your contract. Later, the odd, strangely devoted little Peppo comes to your dressing room. My lady. Peppo, please, let me be. Madonna, I beg of you, listen to what I have to say. Oh. Look, after tonight, Madame Brock will bother you no longer. What are you saying, Pepo? In the room where I keep my props, there is a mirror. A mirror especially created for the use of Madame Cazzana. A mirror? Yes. 
But ah, such a mirror. And so, so, so practical. You see, it was purchased for Madame Akatsana nearly 20 years ago by a man who was madly in love with her and very jealous. Oh, come now. You're speaking in riddles, old man. Explain yourself. Well, the mirror, the glass, was treated in such a way that a high-pitched trill or vibrato would instantly explode it in one's face. <laughs> a just reward for vanity, Madonna, would you not agree? Eh? Especially if one is accustomed to singing into one's mirror, like the good Faust Margarita. Eh? How is that that you have come to possess this... this mirror? <laughs> Madame Gazzana was in love with another, so she gave the mirror to me. Ah, you're dreaming, old man. If you were telling me the truth, you could not know of the mirror's treatment. Gatsana herself did not know. But I do know. The jealous lover told me. When Gatsana sang Margarita, and the mirror did not explode, the man came to see why. When I told him I had the mirror, he begged me to give it back for fear some innocent one would be hurt. But... But you kept the mirror? Yes. I was certain that someday it would serve its purpose. Oh, get out of here, people. So, this, then, is my reward for offering you happiness. I told you to leave, people. Very well, my fine lady. But the next time, you will come to me. Really? You think no, Madonna, huh? <laughs> I shall be waiting for you. Downstairs in my room with my props where I belong, where all the ugly things are kept. <laughs> You know in your heart there is only hatred for Kitty Brock, don't you, Orianne? And you wonder why you fail to take advantage of Peppo's offer. The more you think about it, the more you're certain Peppo told you the truth. The principle of shattering glass by, by vibration has been known for more than a century. And now you've sent him away, the only one who could help you. As you leave your dressing room and start down the circular stairway... Orion! Orion! Oh, Charles! Oh, where have you been? I've tried to reach you. I... Charles, you have to excuse me now. I must see Julio. Oh, wait, it's important. I I have something to say to you. Well, all right, but do hurry. I, I hardly know how to begin. It's rather difficult to... Charles, what is it? Orion, I must ask you to release me from my promise. Release you? Orion, please don't hate me. I... So it's true. The Brock woman, is it? Yes. Yes, it happened all at once. It was sudden, overwhelming. We... Well, neither of us could help it. Oh, Charles, you fool! Wait! It's finally happened, hasn't it, Oriane? You've lost everything. Though you're still under contract, Julio has replaced you in the company. And now Charles has rejected you. You walk backstage, behind the lofty proscenium, as though lost in a dream... As the hours pass, you can concentrate on only one thing. One person. Kitty Brock. She's the cause of it all, isn't she? Then in the distance, you hear the chorus rehearsing for tonight's performance of Faust. Concealed behind a flat, you watch your daughter Felice as she sings. So young, so alive. Then another voice becomes audible. Kitty Brock rehearsing your role. The role of Margarita. Her voice taunts you, doesn't it, Oriane? You begin to tremble with rage. And then a thought flickers through your mind. Jewel song. Margarita gazes into a mirror. A mirror. The hatred you feel for Kitty Brock swells within you. You turn, rush downstairs to the property room. It's the first time you've been below the opera house. You find the air damp, faded. And as you walk along the dark corridor, you see a dim light at the far end and you hear Peppo. Peppo! Peppo! Oh. It is the fine lady come to visit Peppo, huh? What an honor you accord me. Peppo, I... I'm in need of your help. I have no time to lose. 
I must have the mirror. Pepo, please give it to me. A moment. For what reason do you want it? For what reason do you think? The Brock woman. She has robbed me of my fiancé, my position, everything. Everything, my lady? Or is it just that she has robbed you of your lover? Are you going to give me the mirror? Yes, I will give you the mirror. Take it, take it. <sighs> Thank you. And then now, Pepo. Yes? You leave the building. And stay away until after the performance tonight. Oh, but Madonna, Mr. Cassini, what will he say when he asks me what shall I say? You were called away suddenly. Somebody in the family was ill. Anything, I don't care. It will be safer. If you are not here, they cannot blame you. An accident. Someone picks up the wrong mirror by mistake. Yes, yes, I understand. Yes, I will go immediately. You watch Peppo back out of the room, twisting the tattered cap in his hands. The moment he's gone, you pick up the mirror. Quickly, you slip it under your wrap and hurry to your dressing room. You put in a call to Union Station, reserve a compartment on the late train to New York. Moments later, you're backstage, to the left wing, where the garden sequence paraphernalia is set and waiting. You hurry to the jewel box on the table. Quickly, you remove the mirror from the box. Replace it with a deadly one you got from Peppo. Yes, Sorian. In a fraction of a second, the deed is accomplished. Back at your apartment, you spend the rest of the afternoon packing for your trip to New York. Then shortly before six that evening, you hurry from the building. Your train doesn't leave till 9.40, and you decide to have dinner at a quaint little Italian restaurant not far from Union Station. As you approach the waiting cab, the driver opens the door for you. Hurry on. Hurry on, you turn and see Giulio Cassini hurrying down the street towards you. Hurry, driver. If you're the Italian restaurant, Commercial Street. Hurry on, you're relaxed, aren't you, Orient? Hours later, as the train pulls out of the station, you lean back in your chair, give yourself up to the slow, hypnotic rhythm of the wheels on the track. Wheels that every moment take you further away from the opera house, where the performance is now in progress. Suddenly a picture flashes through your mind. The opera. Kitty Brock and the Jewel Song. You can see her now, can't you? Singing into the mirror. You can almost hear the high-pitched trill and then the glass shattering. It is too bad, Madame Brock, that your first performance with this company shall be your last. About ten o'clock, you step out of your compartment, start down the narrow corridor toward the club car, and then suddenly your ears become alert. Your brain starts spinning wildly as two voices emerge from a compartment up ahead. Oh, come along, darling. That's Kitty Brock's voice. What is she doing on this train? A moment later, you see her step into the corridor, followed by Charles. You stand there dumbfounded, unable to move, unable to think. Uh, Kitty, don't you think we ought to wear Julio... When we arrive in New York, we'll be soon enough. Do you think he'll be mad because we eloped? Missing the performance tonight, I mean. He'll be furious, of course. But who cares? <laughs> I doubt very much if Orion will ever sing for Cassini again. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. Well, it's Felice. She's quite good, you know. Felice? Who is... Orion's daughter. You didn't know. <laughs> Felice. Felice. Oh, no. Elise will have to sing. She's the only one left who knows the rules. Conductor! Conductor! Yes, ma'am? I must get off the train immediately. You must stop. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I've I... got to get back to Los Angeles. Well, we'll be in Pasadena in a few minutes. You can get off there, take a cab. What time is it now? Ten minutes after ten, ma'am. All right, all right. I get off at Pasadena. Oh. Three, three, four, one, seven, nine, four. Busy. 
Oh, no. It can't be. It can't. Try, try operator. Oh. Oh. Who, who was keeping the operator? Operator. Operator. I'm trying to reach Creston 1794. But I keep getting busy signal. Will you check that for me, please? That is a toll call, madam. Oh, hurry, it's important. The number is Creston 1794. Yes. Yes, do hurry. One moment, please. Oh. Oh, really? Who was taking her so long? Operator! Operator! I've got to reach Feliz. Hello? Yes, Operator. Creston 1794 has been reported out of order. Out of order? I'm sorry if you'll place your call later. But it's important. I must get through somehow. Please, is there anything you can do? I'm sorry the line is out of order. Oh! <laughs> Yes, ma'am. The Opera House in Los Angeles. Can you make it in 20 minutes? I've got to be backstage before 10.40. 20 minutes? Oh. Well, that's pretty quick, lady. Make it quicker if you can. Don't worry about traffic fines. I pay for everything. Please hurry. It's a matter of life and death. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. And now, back to The Whistler. It's a race against time, isn't it, Orian? The minutes tick away, precious minutes. And finally, your cab roars into downtown Los Angeles. You must reach the opera before the jewel song begins. Before your daughter Felice, as Margarita, sings into the deadly mirror you would hope would shatter in Kitty Brock's face. Then as you're within half a block of the opera house. Driver, what's the matter? Why are you stopping? Sorry, lady, I can't run over the car in front of me. Can't you go around there? Sorry again, that's impossible. All right, here's your fare. Keep the change. I run the rest of the way. I must get backstage before 1040. Well, lady, you can't get out here. Be careful. A small crowd had gathered near the opera house, stunned by the news of the tragedy. They saw Giulio Cassini slip out the side entrance with Felice Donati. They watched the sobbing girl, a handkerchief covering her face, being assisted toward the waiting ambulance. Now, now, my dear, everything will be all right. Please, please, let us through. Here, let me have the hand. Please. Giulio, oh, Take it easy, please. Now, we're all right. Please. Hours later in the hospital waiting room, Giulio Cassini, hands clasped behind his back, stood by the window staring out into the night. The room was quiet except for the gentle sobbing of the woman who sat nearby. (laughs) Giulio turned, placed his hand on her shoulder, and then a door opened softly. A white-clad figure stepped out into the hall and approached them. Doctor. Uh, Doctor, you how are is she? Mr. Julia Cassini? Yes, yes. Will she be all right? Well, she'll pull through okay. Oh. But her face was cut quite badly by the glass. Oh, may we see her now, Doctor? Oh, uh, uh, this is uh, Phyllis, Doctor, the injured lady's daughter. May we go in? For a moment, yes. Come along. Oh, thank you. Come along, Phyllis. Uh, Mr. Cassini. Yes? Do you know how this accident happened? Oh, uh, according to the cab driver, Orion jumped from a taxi, started to run toward the opera house, saying she had to get there before 10.40. Uh, she did not see the car approaching. 10.40? Uh, yes, uh, that is just the time when the jewel song starts. And that's when Peppo rushed onto the stage, stopped the show. He grabbed the mirror from me and broke it into a thousand pieces. That 
Let that whistle be your signal for the whistler each Sunday night at this same time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.